Hey, welcome back to Super Freak. Today is a quick, short episode, and this is a tip I have for you if you want to be more productive, more energized, more joyful, and you want to live a meaningful life. Are you in? <laughs> okay, good. So a lot of the time we are, especially as high performers, especially as creatives, driven human beings, we tend to take on a lot of extra responsibilities, extra, sometimes they're obligations and they don't even really feel so good. Sometimes we say yes when we really mean no. Sometimes we're still fulfilling agreements that we don't really particularly want to keep doing, but because we gave someone our word maybe a long time ago, we don't want to do the thing that we need to do to stop doing it. Now, sometimes, and this is probably the biggest lesson I've ever had in the last couple of years for me personally, sometimes the one thing that you need to do is the one thing that you've been avoiding doing or you really don't want to do because it's going to disappoint someone or it's going to anger them or upset them. Disappointment is the worst, right? We know how it feels as women to be disappointed. We do so much to avoid that feeling of disappointment. So we don't typically want to put that onto someone else. So what I've got for you today is an activity. I want you to get a piece of paper. You can just start thinking about this. And this is going to help you start to clarify what you can focus on and what you can start to not focus on. Because the truth is we can do so much, but we can't always do it at once. We can have it all, just not necessarily all at the same time, working on it all, all at the same time. And this is called the energy audit. What is an energy audit? Really simple. You just make a list of what is energizing you and what is draining you. Why is this fantastic? Well, it depends on the circumstance that you're in, the day that you are having. What energizes you and what drains you is going to be different day to day, moment to moment. It's not necessarily so you can completely remove what drains you immediately, although I will be suggesting that later in this podcast removing what drains you or eradicating it or limiting it or delegating it as much as possible. Sometimes it's not possible. But more than that, it's about awareness. When you are aware of what is energizing you and what is draining you, you can A, do more of what energizes you, B, do less of what drains you, or C, just focus more on what energizes you if you can't do something about what drains you. So I'll give you an example that's not work-related, and then I'll give you an example that's work-related and how it can be applied practically to your business, let's say. Let's start with just life in general. Now, when you make a list of what energizes you and what drains you, you may discover that today, you know, you've had a big week, you're a little bit tired, maybe you're at the end of school holidays, maybe the people in your family are just draining you because you've been around them a lot. Maybe your kids are a little bit draining at the minute because they're just restless and they're ready to go back to school. Maybe it's your partner. Now we can't necessarily just get rid of the things that drain us and it's not about that. But I tell you what, having the awareness of what is draining you and it might be, oh, I'm checking my emails too many times a day. Oh, I've been on a screen for too long today is going to seriously help you find more joy, more productivity, more purpose, more intention within moments. Okay, so again, it's not that you can necessarily eradicate what's draining you, but being aware of it can help you either place attention on it, turn it into a project, break it down. Maybe it's overwhelming you. Maybe you need to break it down into smaller steps or maybe just because you know you've been on a screen for too long, it's time to get off the screen and out into nature. You can do more of what is energizing you. But let's talk now about business, right, or your work. So when you think about what energizes you and what drains you, if you have the ability, the resource, the time, or maybe even just the confidence, sometimes we can start to rejig our lives so that we can actually remove more of what drains us and do more of what energizes us. I'll give you a couple of examples. Sometimes in business, I work with a lot of creative entrepreneurs, creative business owners, artists, athletes, performers. Sometimes our life is actually our work, like we are the business. And sometimes it's a case of you have a business where you're leading lots of other people. When you are the leader of your own life, you do actually have a little bit more autonomy over what it is that you're doing, your time, your schedule, than often we realize. A lot of the time we are 
simply doing things the way we were socialized or taught to do them. For example, you start work at nine o'clock, you finish work at 5 p.m. It might not suit you starting work at nine o'clock. It may not suit you finishing at five, but that's what you were taught. So that's what you do. Maybe someone said it, maybe you've observed someone. There are lots of things that we do that it's time to question. It's 2023 at the time of recording. And there are so many things that have shifted in the last couple of years that I can honestly say they didn't need to shift just in the last two years. Some of those things could have shifted a really long time ago, but we never questioned them. So it's really fun to do this exercise and start thinking about what energizes you and what drains you. I'm going to give you a couple of examples from my own life, and I want you to start thinking about what works for you. Okay, so in my own world, some of you may know the story of my background, some of you may not, but after I experienced almost three years of chronic fatigue, it's about two years where it was really debilitating, another six or seven months where I was coming back from it, and then since then, probably another 10 years of trying to work out how I can fit into this world where I was sort of told I would never get better and I could never really do things and my body wasn't the same. I was forced into this equation of looking at what energizes me and what drains me. And I know that for a lot of my clients, particularly when I'm working with them in the Fierce Salon, by the way, the Fierce Salon is opening soon. So if you like distinctions like this, make sure you reach out to me and you apply to join for the next round. But it's really interesting to do a little bit of an audit on what energizes you and drains you, especially when you've been forced to do it. But this actually really saved me and it saved my business. So one of the things I really found challenging when I started to get better was, okay, so in Australia, I have an international business and the Australian time zones, the best times for things to cross over, as in when clients of mine in the UK, the US, Europe, And depending on where in Europe and then different parts of Africa, trying to accommodate all time zones when I live in the most awkward time zone ever means that the lot of the world is awake while I am naturally meant to be asleep. So I originally used to think I'm going to have to get up so early to speak with my clients. And it's not true. However, that's what I was socialized to do. It's what I believed I needed to do. And when I started to look at what was draining me, it was getting up really early and getting straight onto calls. Now, some people love that. It actually energizes them because they get out of their own way. They don't have to think. Their conscious mind is out of the way. And I definitely find that on the days I do get up early. But for me, it wasn't getting up early every now and again. It was getting up early all the time that was super draining for me. I fully recognize I have no kids. My life is going to be very different to some of you who are listening, but please don't compare your life to my life. Just take this for the insight. Listen for the insight. So I didn't think it was actually possible for me to be able to change my timing around. But when I did, I figured out that what would energize me was instead of having super early calls, making my calls later in the day and having two calls at two different time zones so people all around the world could meet me at an appropriate time or having one call a week that was early and that was it. That was super energizing. Another time or another thing that was draining for me was being on calls every single day not because of being on calls, because calls really energize me with clients, but it was task switching. So inside of a coaching business, there's obviously not just coaching that happens. There's creating podcasts, there's speaking to new people, having meetings, doing things for other people's podcasts, finance, organizing things, being creative, making stuff. There's a lot more to it than just the coaching piece. And so what I found was draining was when I would have to find these little pockets of time to create instead of being able to burst, I'm a burster. So understanding how your natural energy works and building your life around it is super powerful. So I started to batch my days and now I have coaching calls all day on certain days and on other days, it's completely free and clear. Then I realized, of course, I hope you can hear that this was an experiment that went on through continuously checking with what was energizing me and what was draining me. Remember too, after having chronic fatigue, it wasn't negotiable or optional for me to ignore this. It's definitely why I'm still here. My nervous system or energy is compromised. So another thing that was draining me was I realized when I have absolutely no free space in my calendar, like it is booked up weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks in advance with no space, that feels really heavy and draining to me. So 
against what I saw pretty much anyone doing, I decided to only work, have calls three weeks of every month and book one week of every month where I could go away or be creative or just rest my body if I needed to. And I have to tell you, that was probably one of the most transformational changes I made in my business because when you have an energy system that kind of goes up and down, it's all over the place. It's really nice to have a week where I can recalibrate. And again, it's another reason why I'm still here after 15 years. So the energizing and draining list, and again, this is mine and it's just very simple examples from my business, but it's not about necessarily feeling better right now. It's about looking long-term. If there are things that are draining you constantly, when you keep checking in over the weeks and months, it's very important to pay attention to that. Another thing I found was quite draining for me was even though I like having a nice big screen and I can sit with correct posture when I'm at my desk, sitting in the one place, it ends up being a little bit boring for me. I like to move around. So I invested in a laptop so that I can move around my house and write or go other places and actually write and create. And something else that I found was really draining was living in noisy places. (laughs) This is going to sound really over the top, right? But here's the thing. Back in 2013, I lived in Sydney. I lived in an apartment where I could hear my neighbors and I could hear people down on the street below. And while I love the energy of a city, it's not really my favorite thing. And no one that I knew had coaching businesses where you didn't live in a city. So it felt really, really edgy for me to move away from the city. In fact, to travel, of course, once I started doing it, I met heaps of people who were already doing it. It wasn't new, but to me, it was like this big leap into the unknown. So I want to encourage you as well, if just because you think something is really draining and you want to change it and you don't know anyone who's doing it, I promise you, nothing really is all that new. So once you take the leap, you'll probably discover there's a whole world out there you didn't know existed. That's certainly what I found. And this was before Zoom existed, right? This was when people had this thing called Skype and I had to teach my clients how to download it on the internet. And they were like, where are you? What's happening? It's so weird that I can see you. But for me, it was super draining to need to drive around Sydney to see my clients. Then it was super draining for me to invite clients into my home and to ask my partner to leave so we could have space because it was a tiny home and then having to clean between clients and make sure people left on time so the next person would be. It was like draining. And then I tried working in an office and I hated the commute and I didn't like that I had to find parking and I didn't like that my clients had to find parking. It just all felt like a lot of extra steps. And so when I started working online, I didn't know anyone else was doing it, but it was so energizing to me to start building my business and doing my work in a way that actually worked for me. At every single step, I had resistance, either from myself or from others. I remember at one stage, one of my clients said to me, really annoys me that you don't work on weekends because in corporate, I have to book a meeting space. It's by lunch hour. And she was very, very frustrated. And I said to her, listen, I could work weekends. But if I did, I probably wouldn't be here by now because I'd have no time off. I need to nurture my body. If I'm not the right coach for you, that's absolutely fine. I can refer you out to someone who will work on weekends for you. But unfortunately, that's just not how I work. And if you want to work with me, I hope you can make it okay to make your lunch hour awesome. Give yourself some extra space. And of course, my client did. She was like really happy with that. So something else I did was I moved to the country. (laughs) Again, it's not available for everyone. It's not necessarily a thing that every single person can do, but I want to invite you to consider that before COVID, we all thought that working online and working from home was completely impossible. And a lot of us just wait for someone up above to say, right, this is what's happening instead of asking for it. And since COVID, we've seen a huge rise of people becoming more confident to ask for exactly what they want in terms of their working situation, because they are discovering what energizes them. And for some people, it's not working at home. It's being in the office and being around people and being away from all the distractions. But for others, it's working working from home. It's not doing the commute. So paying attention to this, I promise, will change your life. And these were a couple of tiny little examples, but I could think of so many more with clients that I've worked with. One of my clients was redesigning the camper van that she lives in. It's not a camper van. It's like a caravan. 
And her and her husband live in a caravan and they travel all around. They're so inspiring. And they were redesigning their caravan. And when she was talking to me about the design of the caravan, P.S., I'm an interior architect by trade. Life just had other plans for me. Now I kind of architect people's minds, but I am never not down for an interior design conversation. So a lot of my clients, we, we do talk about interior design. We were sort of talking about the redesign of her caravan and we weren't laying out plans or anything, but we were talking about what energizes you about the design of your caravan and what drains you. And one of the things she said was, you know, the way the bed is oriented, I work up earlier than my husband, but we sleep on the wrong sides of the bed. And if I wake up early, I would have to climb over him to get up and do my morning routine. So I can't. So I lay there and I feel a little bit stagnant in the morning and it kind of bothers me. And these are the little things that they're not a huge deal. But if you think about a blister in your shoe when you go hiking, right? It's not a big deal. You put a Band-Aid over it. But if you don't really get to work on it and do some first aid on it or it gets worse or you ignore it, The blister can be debilitating. It can prevent you from being able to do stuff because your whole foot is swelling and in pain or your focus is on the foot. It's just taking up bandwidth that doesn't need to be taken up. You know what I'm saying? So by thinking about what's energizing and draining you, you can make tiny, subtle little shifts to the way you live, the way you use your time. For example, one of my clients said, I'm not getting my early morning run in that when I know I'm doing my run, everything works. Everything off the back of it just works because I listen to this particular music or sound when I'm running. It just gets me into the zone for the day. However, with the changes to my kids' schooling and the way we have to drive there and travel now, I am always at my desk by 9 a.m., 100% always there, and I don't want to stop that. It's a big part of my success. When I questioned that with my client, we realized what was draining her was A, not doing this running, and B, keeping up this standard that I need to be at my desk at 9 a.m. She's the boss. It didn't really matter. We changed her schedule ever so slightly so she could bring running back in, and everything shifted off the back of that. It only made a good difference, huge difference, in fact, to her bottom line. So... The energizing versus draining list is fantastic. Be aware that you don't have to do anything about what's draining you. Just being aware of it can be so life-changing. If, however, something is draining you for a really long time, it's important to pay attention to that. And then really look at what's energizing you. And I remember when I studied to be a health coach, this is going back a really long time, I did a health coaching course. I remember something really valuable they said, and that was rather than trying to fit, I can't remember what the distinction was actually, but it was more like fitting out your diet with more of the good stuff so you didn't necessarily feel like eating the junk so much later on, just eat more of the good stuff. And I think this really applies so much to what energizes and drains us. If you start filling in your day with more things that energize you, there's not so much room for what drains you anyway. And if something drains you that you can't do anything about, then adding in more things that energize you, that feel good, that bring you joy, that make you smile, that light you up, that lighten your spirit is going to help you be able to deal with the things you can't do anything about that feel really draining right now. So I hope this little tidbit has helped you today. I hope it inspires you to just take three minutes and think about today. What is energizing you? What is draining you? Think about the different areas of life my health, my home. Think about every room in your home. Maybe your car is really cluttered. Actually, I really need to vacuum my car. That is draining me. It gets me every time. It's full of sand from the summer. And think about your relationships. Think about your friendships. Think about your work. Think about your business, your career, maybe the people in different areas of your life. Just allow yourself to kind of flick through and ask yourself which parts of these are sparking something in me and which parts feel a little bit contractive, slower, not so fun. Pay attention, make a list if you want. If you put it in a spreadsheet, I know some of you would love this, but if you put it in some kind of a spreadsheet to track it, you can actually see week to week or time to time. Oh, that's been there for like three weeks now. Might be time to do something about that. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, my friends. I will see you next time. Remember, everything you want is so much closer than you think. So check in with what energizes you, check in with what drains you, and I will see you soon. Ciao for now.